guys can have a seat for a minute. Isn't it awesome to see people come and be baptized and, and celebrate with them as they follow Jesus in obedience? Amen. As they've given their life to Christ as, as a child of his and submitted to him as Lord. But Jesus doesn't only ask us to be baptized. He also tells us to um, take part in communion or the Lord's Supper. Um, to do this together as the body of Christ, as a church. And that's what we're going to do here in a little bit. Maybe you're here for the first time. You're a guest with us this morning. You've never been to church before. Um, I just want to explain what communion is. It's a time to stop, to pause, to remember what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. It's a time for believers to, to just stop and, and reflect on what Jesus Christ has done for them. So if you're a guest with us this morning and, and you're a believer, we invite you to take part in this. Um, if you're a regular member of this church, you come here often, um, this is a great opportunity for us as believers to just, to just reflect on what Jesus Christ has done. And reflecting, remembering allows a number of different things. First, it allows us to just stop and celebrate this great gift that Jesus Christ has given us, that we now have salvation, that we have eternal life because of Christ dying on the cross in our place. But it also, stopping and remembering, gives us the opportunity to consider our relationship with Jesus Christ. Maybe some of you here this morning just need to take some time to confess your sins to Jesus. Maybe there's some stuff that's in the way that's kind of um, made this relationship with him feel a little bit distant. We would invite you this morning to, while well, I'm going to read some scripture here in a little bit, but we would invite you to just come and, and, and give that to Christ, to confess those sins, to, to get those things out of the way so that way you can be closer and more, more drawn to Christ in your relationship. But reflecting and remembering what Christ did also reminds us that he carries our burdens. We don't have to. Life's hard. And, and so maybe this morning you want to just take some time to come and just kneel before the Lord and just, just thank God that, that you don't have to do life on your own because he's your Savior, he's your God, and he loves you. I'm going to take some time to, to read a passage of Scripture. And again, I would invite you, um, come down and pray. Stand where you are and pray. Maybe you just want to sit still and listen as I read, whatever it is. Take time to just reflect, remember what Jesus Christ did for you. I'm going to be reading from Isaiah 53. Isaiah was a prophet to the nation of Israel. He came, he was anointed by God to carry out God's message to the people of Israel. And he, he's writing this, this letter, he, he's speaking to these people and he records his thoughts. And in Isaiah 53, he tells a story of God's suffering servant. It's a prophecy of Jesus Christ who's going to come and set people free from their sins. What's amazing is, is this passage that I'm about to read. It was written over 700 years before Jesus Christ ever stepped foot on this earth. As I read, would you listen and consider the things that are written down and how accurate, to the very detail, how accurate it is about what Christ did for us so we could have a relationship with him. Who has believed our message? To whom has the Lord revealed his powerful arm? My servant grew up in the Lord's presence like a tender green shoot, like a root in dry ground. There was nothing beautiful or majestic about his appearance, nothing to attract us to him. He was despised and rejected. A man of sorrows, acquainted with deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. Yet it was our weakness he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so that we could be made whole. 
He was whipped so that we could be healed. All of us, like sheep, have strayed away. We have left God's paths to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. He was oppressed and treated harshly, yet he never said a word. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep is silent before the shears, he did not open his mouth. Unjustly condemned, he was led away. No one cared that he died without descendants, but his life was cut short in midstream. But he was struck down for the rebellion of my people. He had done no wrong. He had never deceived anyone. But he was buried like a criminal. He was put in a rich man's grave. But it was the Lord's good plan to crush him and cause him grief. Yet when his life was made an offering for sin, he will have many descendants. He will enjoy a long life and the Lord's good plan will prosper in his hands. When he sees all that is accomplished by his anguish, he will be satisfied. And because of his experience, my righteous servant will make it possible for many to be counted righteous, for he will bear all their sins. I will give him the honors of a victorious soldier because he exposed himself to death. He was counted among the rebels. He bore the sins of many and interceded for rebels. That's what Christ did for us. In just a moment, we're going to sing, Oh, come to the altar. And I would invite you as we stand to come to the altar, to celebrate in what Jesus did for you, to confess the sins that, that are in your life that, that you just need to deal with before we take, take the communion service together. To just lay down the burdens, the, the weight that you've been carrying for so long. Give them to Christ because you don't have to carry it alone. Maybe you're here this morning and you want to know more about letting Christ carry your sins away. Maybe you're here this morning and you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. We welcome you to come down. We'd love to take time to talk to you, to show you from God's word how you can know that you will spend eternity with him in heaven. prepare to take communion and celebrate the Lord's Supper and think about that broken body and the shed blood. I would ask you this morning that you didn't, if you didn't get a cup, if you didn't get the bread this morning, raise your hand right now and somebody will bring one your way. Raise your hand and someone will get that to you. And, uh, just know that, as Jared was sharing, that this is a serious matter. It is a time that we reflect on our own lives, on our own relationship with Jesus, that we think about uh, 
What happened on that cross? What happened on that cross? And so, as you reflect, think about your own sins. Randy, let me have one also, please. Think about your own sins. Think about your own relationship, where you might be were it not for the cross. But where you might be had you not made that decision. And if you have made that decision, then are you any further down the road because you have made that decision? So this morning as we reflect and as we pause, may we just pray. Father, as we come to you now to remember Lord, to remember. As we hear the voices of children this morning, God, you loved us so much that you sent your child, your son, to die for our sins. Lord, that's hard for us to imagine. I think about a small child growing into a teenager and then a young adult to give their lives for all who would sin, which would be everyone. The worst of the worst, those who are not that bad, sin is sin, and to send your own son to die for ours. God, that's hard for us to even believe or imagine. But God, we thank you this morning. We want to remember that broken body. Lord, we want to remember that shed blood. God, may we do it with a seriousness. Lord, may we remember with love and gratitude. In Jesus' name, amen. In 1 Corinthians 11, Paul writes in verse 23, For I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself on the night when he was betrayed. The Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. Father, thank you for this bread. Thank you for that broken cup. God, we remember you now. And we thank you now. In Jesus' name, amen. the same way he took the cup of wine after supper saying this cup is the new covenant between God and his people an agreement confirmed with my blood do this to remember me as often as you drink it father we thank you for the shed blood we thank you for the blood of Jesus covering all of our sins, our shortcomings. God, we thank you and we remember in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 26, he says, for every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. And he is coming again. Amen. Amen. 
And you see, just like those who were baptized this morning were saying, hey, I am now in the family of God. I have received Christ as my Savior. We read in the book of Galatians, chapter 3, verse 26. It says, For you are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. And all who have been united with Christ in baptism have put on Christ like putting on new clothes. You know how that makes you feel. You know how exciting that is. Imagine putting on Christ and going out into the world and letting them see it. Letting them see Him. You know, we are quick when we get something new to take the tags off of it. Aren't we? Well, I got these shoes the other day. Actually, I didn't. My wife picked them out for me. That's how I roll. Because <laughs> most of the time, I'd rather have the stomach flu as go shopping. I'm just being honest. That's just me. But I had to try them on, and they didn't fit, so I took them back. And I thought, I better try them on before... You know, I leave the store, so I got them out to the truck and tried them on, and I thought, well, hey, they look pretty good. I'm just going to keep wearing them. I mean, I took the paper out, right? And I got home that evening and took them off. Price tag right there all day. And I thought, well, you know what? Everybody got to see I got new shoes on. How about that? That or they thought I just stole them. I don't know which. But when we put on Christ, that should never fade away. We should never take that tag off of saying, hey, I am His. I want you to know I am His. There is a oneness about the church and the joint heirs with Christ who are joined together that we don't celebrate often enough. says in verse 28, there is no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. We are all one in Christ Jesus. So those who are welcomed into the family this morning, we're to love on each other when we leave this place. I want to challenge you not to just speak to somebody or hey or wave. Give them a firm handshake and a hug. Say, I love you. I'm glad I'm a part of your family. I'm glad you're in my family. Are we a messed up family? Yes, we are. But we're a forgiven family. Forgiven family and we are one In Christ Jesus. Celebrate that today. Over in Philippians we find in chapter 2 these words. Is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ? Any comfort from His love? Any fellowship together in the Spirit? Are your hearts tender and compassionate? And then he writes in verse 2, Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other. Loving one another. And working together with one mind and purpose. One mind and purpose. See, there's that oneness again. That one family that we all are. We're going to mess up. We encourage each other. We hold each other up. We remind each other that we will never be left and we will never be forsaken. 
that we are one family. He writes, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. So you see, church, when we are one and we are humble and we encourage each other and we love each other and we share with each other, we know somebody's having a bad week. We know they're dealing with a tough situation. We contact them. We encourage them. And you know somebody's been missing for a week or two. You call them. You say, hey, I know you sit on my row. Where you been? Well, I've got this situation going on. I didn't know if I did, I would be praying for you. Let me know. So this morning as we celebrate these baptisms, as we celebrate these decisions to follow Christ, let us celebrate our oneness as a church. And let us consider our selflessness as individuals. Thinking of others more highly than ourselves. Being humble. Living the life of a servant. And doing our very best to live out in this day and time a life as Christ might. And when we do that, We've given our life to Christ. We've given it everything we've got. We've done our very best to serve Him. We've lived humbly. Then one day we'll hear those words, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a little. I'll make you ruler over much. That's our goal as individuals and as a church. And I'm thankful for a body of believers who still desire to see people come to know Christ above their own desires. Amen. Would you pray with me? Father, I thank you so much for what you've given us to celebrate today. Father, I thank you for the unity that is felt here at Cross Point Church. Lord, I thank you for the welcomeness that is felt here in our church. God, I pray as we leave today that, God, you would move us to go outside these doors and share our own story, share our own faith. And Lord, for these who were baptized this morning, Lord, you send them out on fire for you to let others know what happened to them this day and what it means. Lord, as we celebrate and praise you now, God, may you truly be worshiped and high and lifted up. For we love you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. I trust you are living in that amazing grace. I trust that when you go out of this door, that when you are driving home and you meet people today or you're driving to lunch, that you'll smile, that you will wave. I want to challenge you to do something. When you meet somebody on the road in just a few minutes, you're going to meet people coming from church too. And some of them are going to have a smile on their face and some of them are going to be excited and happy and some are going to be like this. And you won't even know they've been to church. You do me a favor, just wave at them and smile. Wave at them and smile. When you get where you're going today, if you're going to eat somewhere, if you stop along the way, hold the door for someone. Tell them to have a blessed day. Tell them God loves them. Leave the tags on today. If you've got those new clothes on, if you're putting on Christ and you have done that in your life, maybe you have layered too much and people can't see him because of all that you've put on top, take it off and let them see you living in amazing grace. You see, that's what's going to draw people to Him is seeing how you live your life. It's been an amazing day, amen? Seeing people baptized, coming to know Christ and just an amazing time of worship. So when you leave out of this place, go out in confidence in Christ. Go out excited 
for what he's going to do in your life this week. Church, I love you. I thank you so much for who you are, just for how you love Jesus. I pray as we leave this place that the Holy Spirit would just be flowing out of you everywhere you go. And that includes in your own car on the way home. That includes when you get to that person you're visiting today and you have those family issues. Love on people. Love on people.